Alright everybody, uh, back again here with another study from my personal journal. This is Parame with Parame Trades. Not a financial advisor guys, uh, just doing a little bit of speculation, a little bit of chart study. So do not uh, mistake this for financial advice. Right. So. That being said, um, you know, welcome to the channel if you haven't been welcomed already. Thanks for stopping in. I really appreciate it, and, and thanks for spending some time with me in my own you know, personal journal, my video, video journal, video diary here, if you will. So I'm going to take a look at uh, ES just because of recent developments. I mean, within the last, well, I don't know, five trading days or something like that. In a previous study, we did, you know, we looked at the 15 minute chart and we looked at the the course of the last two weeks but um you know we've we've since had to uh since had to erase that and, and go back to the drawing board here um we look at our 15 minute chart and it is well it's 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 not serving any purposes right now <laughs> um we, we we did identify this you know this short position up here just based off pivots and if you got in early if you got if you got in anywhere in here and you held on you you did rather well and you see that you know when the market opened this this week here first day of trading we gapped down so there's there's some strong sentiment there we thought we had a case here for a reversal. We thought that there might have been something in the works for at least a bounce, but th this was the extent of it. So, you know, double bottom, double bottom here. Market sentiment's really low; it's on the rise. We th we thought we really had something here, but we we when we cleared out this this pivot here, this high, that was it. That was it. Uh, bulls could just could not sustain this uptrend. There is. <laughs> There just doesn't seem to be much optimism in the market right now for the indices, especially for the S&P. And, and not being able to clear this out and find this double top was, was a pretty strong indication that the, the bears were in control. And, and this, I think this candle right here is one that told it. You know, just, just about, a, I mean, not even, didn't even get it. Didn't even get it. Just about did, but I mean even if you you know we move it up here they could not they could not sustain it bulls could not sustain the bounce here so bears took over bears attacked uh you know, bulls were trying to defend this they got up over it they closed just barely over it but this next candle telltale sign and then the rejection on the ema and we're just using on the 15 minute chart the 8 ema uh uh, m mostly from a little tip from uh, from Bob Bowman here on the five minute chart, he uses a twenty five EMA. So we just we we kind of reverse engineered it here and and used the eight EMA on the fifteen minute chart. Now you see this quite consistent rejection. Bulls try to tr try to make a win, get a win. Uh, sorry, a little distracted here. Well, you know, bulls tried to to gain the advantage here, try to get the upper hand, but uh, again, we we topped out. We topped out here, and then we get a false we get a false top. So we top out, we get a false top, and then uh, you know away we go again, stuck under the AMA. Doesn't look like the bulls have much control at all here. And, and the market has spoken. So um, that is that. That is that. Let's see. So uh, what we wanted to do is just take a look at. There's a nice clean chart going on here. I'll get this uh, market sentiment out of the way. And and, and we had to we had to drill. We've got to drill down into some higher time frames to find out. You know. And it might be a little bit easier to just look at ES since we have a little bit more data to work with. 
And we're going to do another drawing set here. Just get a nice clean chart so we can take a look and find out where this, where the bleeding might stop, because it might not stop for a while. Uh, boy, look at the weekly, you know, the weekly market sentiment. This is this is this is the place to be a buyer, right? Declining market sentiment, diminishing market sentiment. It's, it's starting to bottom out here. But I guess you never really. Uh, and I've noticed this as well with diminishing open interest is you never wait for the exact bottom on open interest. If you're coupling our rules with um, with commercial interest, we like we like to see um, open interest really high with bearish um, commercial index. And we like to see that we like to see it really high, and then we like to see it start to diminish. And at the point where it's not quite bottoming out with open interest or at its its peak relative low, and we have bullish commercial interest, that's when we like to see a turn. So it would be really interesting actually to see around this time in October, or so November. In November, where market sentiment was, and uh, commercial interest was. I think on ES they've they've been bullish on this for a long time. So, uh, let's get open interest down here, and let's see if we can we can drive on a point with market sentiment. Where is that last leg down? Right about here. There's another leg down here. Extremely bullish. Open interest is high. I mean, it, it doesn't really waver much, does it? They haven't really wavered much with uh, with the S and P until now. The comms have been a little bit bearish, a little bit more bearish than usual, consistently for at least two, three weeks. So uh, this was a, was a pretty strong indicator, I think. So we're trying, to, we're trying to see if we could find some relationship here with relatively high relatively high commercial interest. Sentiment is low. I mean, that's so diminishing, right? Diminishing open uh, market sentiment and high commercial interest. But what we like to see is, is diminishing open interest as well with comms being very bullish. So they didn't quite... Well, I mean, this matches up right here, right? Relatively high open interest with a low index. Not as low as it could be. There are better... There are better... Um, indicators with 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 this uh, combination let's just let's just draw it out real quick so that even I can remember so high open interest plus uh, bearish cot or a negative outlook so high open interest plus uh, a bearish negative outlook plus high WPR or overextended overbought. Now they use this terminology. Overbought, oversold. I don't like it. Um, I don't like the, the you know the the verbiage. And then how can we, we, we couple market sentiment with this too? Um, plus relative high uh, market sentiment. 
and this equals for a, a bearish scenario, right? If we have, so we gotta we, we gotta see a relative, relative high open interest plus, plus uh, a bearish <laughs> bearish COD or a negative outlook plus high WPR or bought plus relative high market sentiment equals a bearish scenario negative outlook right. So if we have relative uh, low open interest plus pos positive COT uh, outlook, low open interest, positive COT plus WPR, Oversold, right? Plus declining or low relative market sentiment equals a bullish scenario. Add ATR, true range. Um, we do a nine factor two point five, which is what I usually do. And we get additional confirmation. So let's let's see if we can find this on the chart here. I mean we've got an inverse kind of correlation here. Oh no, actually you know this looks pretty good. I mean aside from open interest. Um, I mean, open interest was low here, and then we get an increase in open interest. Does I, I don't think that it helps our case. Not completely, at least. You know, with, with signals, but there is not a lot of change in open interest very often with the S&P. I see a lot better um, couplings with uh, commercial interest, open interest, Williams PR, and market sentiment is kind of something new that we're dealing with here. So let's 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 just take a look here. All right. So we're looking for this combination of oh, we're gonna we're gonna use this area. So we've got relatively uh, positive COT outlook. Okay, this is this is really positive up over eighty. Do we have relatively low open interest? No, we don't. Can we rely on that completely? Well, we got one out of one out of two so far. Two out of three because we've got relatively uh, low or oversold WPR, and we have diminishing, declining relative market sentiment is equal to you know for a, to a bullish scenario. Did, did it pan out that way? I mean, I think so. So now let's take a look at where we are with, uh, you know, market sentiment is, is, is relatively high. So we've got this nice, you know, that's great. And I don't like the orange. Let's get rid of the orange. Let's, let's, get, a, let's get a blue in here so we can see a little better. So, you know, the scenario here is a nice pivot too, right? Nice pivot too on the daily. All right, nice pivot here as well. Market sentiment uh, is a blaze in here. It's a blazing. So we've got diminishing. We had high. We had relatively high, you know, market sentiment. Do we have a case, case for the, uh, you know, the, the bull or the bearish scenario? So here's our, you know, our negative outlook with the S&P, right? So do we have relatively high open interest? Yes. We've got relatively high open interest. And we still do. Even e the interest is still high even. I mean, it didn't, it didn't even dip. So 
I don't know how. I don't. I don't know how it's it's not dipping, but we've got relatively high open interest. We've got bearish COT, a negative outlook. We've got one. We've got two. We got two. We've got a two-week period here, almost three weeks, where we're relatively low, which is, you know, hardly consistent for the S and P. So usually, a week in, in bearish territory territory is uh, seem to be common down here. But now we've got two or three weeks of bearishness. This, I mean, I, I think we had reported on this before that this this was much much more consistent than they had been in bearish territory with a, with a negative outlook. So we've got this negative outlook here. Relatively high open interest. It hasn't diminished. WPR is definitely in your oversold territory. Overbought. Overbought. Overbought territory. And we've got relatively high market sentiment. And we couple that with uh, an ATR break for additional confirmation, and, and we got this break up here. So we we broke, you know, through this, and there was no pullback yet. Now maybe here to retest, you know, s some four-hour structure, but and this um, this played out to be just about, you know, four out of four or five. You know, five, it's, this is a five out of five for me on the S&P. So, is it no strange coincidence that this broke bearish? It, it, it looks like all the stars were aligned for this. It really did. And people were just a little bit too excited about the S&P up in here. Now, you know, we got the same relatively high market sentiment uh, you know, previously, and and we had a little bit of a retrace. And again, before before it even bottoms, before it diminish, when it's diminishing, it looks like somebody's picking up the torch, because they're recognizing relatively low prices. And in each case, when market sentiment is has been diminishing, but not all the way down, that's when we started to see the turn. And, and to this point as well is that, um, boy, you look at here, right? Oversold, diminishing market sentiment, and coming up off of uh, low open interest. And comms get bullish, and we take off, and we break the ATR range. So, so where's the where's the bleeding going to stop? You know, we're oversold right now. Market sentiment is sharply declining. We haven't seen this in, in the S&P, and at least in this one year, we haven't seen that at all. We are we are, we are torching the um, oversold range here. We're still bearish. How low can this go? How low can this go? Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at the. Uh, Let's do one thing first. Is we'll just we're gonna look at just a quick reference to the eight EMA. I mean, it's it's loaded. We might as well. The weekly eight is actually it's pretty decent. It's pretty decent. I know some guys who use you know the EMA for confirmation, and now we're we're stuck underneath that, right? Would it have served you well to, you know, just purchase along the AEMA? And how many times? How many times, you know, was that beneficial to you in the last year? And then when we're, you know, we're stuck underneath that here, was it a good time to be a seller? I, I, I like I like the AEMA on the weekly. It looks it looks pretty good. When we're you know above it, when we're above it, it, yeah, no problem buying. When do we do we get that you know unsustainable? 
So we've got this weekly study. Let's let's find some technical tests because well, where can we go here to find a safe bounce entry? You know, this should be weekly support. This is realistically a weekly breakout, right? How, how many how many how many down weeks are we going to have here? Could be could be some months before the S and P I think correct itself. And we were looking at some pretty we're pretty sticky scenario here with uh, with this coronavirus. Right, everybody's fearful. And they they are pumping the fear factor on the news. Let me tell you. Every idiot with um, with a voice or, or or a platform to do so is is pumping fear into the uh, into stockholders here. So everybody's going to suffer now. Huh? Everything is going to suffer. Well, here's your ceiling. You try to break through this ceiling. We don't. We, we don't quite get through it and then we and off we go and this is a nice weekly nice weekly test right down here right we you know we broke out of this weekly resistance we, bro we broke out of this too LB it was it was very brief here but strong bullish candle here very strong bullish candle and we never they never took out that weekly low. Never took it out. This is, you know, that's a strong pivot right there. This is your weekly pivot low, right? And this looks, you know, kind of a double top action. Find better prices, strong bullish candle, get up above the EMA, and we find a new supply zone up in here. There's, you know, there's your your supply zone. And you come up, peg it again, and get a double tap, some double tap action, and then again another strong bullish weekly candle. And we close just below it, but the following week we we finally close above it. And then the week after that, they found support along it, and away we go, and we're off to the races. Another strong bullish candle right here. So where where is this bleeding going to stop? Where is this bleeding going to stop? Well, I'd be willing to bet that there is a bullish block sitting right about here. If I was a betting man, I would watch this level right here. Uh, weekly support test. <clears throat> I think this would be this would be a nice technical test right up in here, right in this right in this block. I think that uh, if bulls had an opportunity, it would be right about here. If they were going to counter, it would be it would be somewhere down about thirty one twenty. We're gonna find out, right? We are gonna find out if if the if thirty one twenty is significant or not. Let's look on the last year. Yeah, I mean you, you get an even better even better look here on the on the daily. Let's get that moved over. Get an even better look on the daily here. Right here, that candle right there. I think I, I think what you get is is a nice bullish I think this might be a nice bullish order block. It's sitting right in here. Sitting lying in wait. Because we are already into this. But this was the candle just before we took off. 
We're gonna find. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. And what do you know? That's is thirty-one hundred. We're gonna mark that off. Thirty-one hundred. Boy, Peter is getting all kinds of slow right now. What is going on? Oh, yeah, I know what it is. Well, we're into about the 25th minute here of this uh, of this video. Hmm. 3,100. Got to see a strong pivot, though. I mean, on the daily, this is just getting absolutely annihilated. There's no support to be found, and I, if, if, if you're a bull, where are the brave bulls right now? Are they are they waiting down here? Are they waiting down here, or are they wait, waiting down here at the weekly support? Because I don't see this, this bleeding stopping anytime soon. But are we going to get a nice turn here? Hmm. Watch this order block. I, uh, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe this is not a bullish order block. But I I have, I have a tendency to think that this is important here. This is an important level, and that the 3100 um, is pretty significant. It's a nice round number, right? Yeah, so it was 3,200, right? Right, Para? Yeah, 32 was an important level, too. Uh, where was the regard for the 3,200 level? Hmm. Not so much. And support down here? No thanks. Oh, we had a nice little pause and, you know, a nice little, yeah bullish attempt here, but you know, bears are in control. Bears are in control. There's, there's nothing going on here. Are we gonna <laughs> gonna bust through this floor? We definitely could. We definitely could. But let's see if they, we can get it turned around. Uh, I'm waiting as a buyer. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not convinced that uh, you know this market's gonna crash anytime soon. I mean, this is a nice. This is a nice retrace. You know, you're, we're talking 250 points so far. Let's just let's keep drilling down a little further here. Let's get up on the four hour. There's nothing, nothing, nothing doing here. Nothing doing. I think a little bit of pause in this area, where where we thought we had some uh, some confluence. Um, you know, a little a little bit of a bounce, but nothing. Just nothing going. Four hour market sentiment's moving down too. <coughs> naturally, naturally. Think rally when market sentiment is low, so diminishing. You know, we're dip, we've got that diminishing market sentiment, like we had pointed out earlier on the daily. Do you wait for it to bottom out? Right? Did we? Did we? Did we purely bottom here? No, we didn't. With with declining market sentiment, and and they took it the other way. It always work out that way? I don't know. I don't think so. But on your four hour here is your here's your relatively this this seems like your relatively low market market sentiment. This is it's down in here in the fifties. Anything below that, you know, think rally. We are we are we are humming here. We are humming here. Watch that thirty one hundred. Watch the thirty one hundred. We'll see um See if see if we can somehow range up a little bit and get a bull win. Something that might give us a clue that um, you know we've got a pivot and that the low of this bleeding is in. So we got a pivot here. Will we get another one here? 
will we get a bounce up and will we get another pivot um, and then can can we find ourselves a buy opportunity for the S&P because it, it, ha it hasn't been beneficial to be uh, on the short side of the S&P for too long this is the I wouldn't even say this is the longest stint. This is a, this has only been a couple of days, and if uh, anything in the you know in the past of the S and P is, is is said or pointed out or alluded to, is that uh, there hasn't been too many down days of the S and P. So yeah, it's gotten really violent, but the amount of days that we've spent in a downtrend here has been very minimal. So we've we've always we have been bouncing you know back up, but will this you know this coronavirus really be that detrimental to global economy? Uh, I guess we'll find out. Need to see a strong bounce? Need to see a strong pivot? Something that's going to tell us, hey, you know, this is this is turning around here. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, we got... This is the closest thing in the four hour that we had, I think. But when we when we surpass this uh, this pivot high, probably pretty pretty good indicator here that there was some more upside to it. And then we get this virtual double top action, and we drilled down on the fifteen minute chart and we showed you know. If he if he took it if if he took the signal, the swing high. Uh, this didn't really give us much warning at all. So and that's and then that's the news, right? That's the news. There was no real on the, at least on the f high. We had a false top here. You know this is a false high. Yeah, I mean this this, this false high and not being able to close over. You know, came up and we found it. And I mean, maybe that's your indicator right there, your double top action. And and in a way we go. But there's there's not much in the way of, 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 of bullish entry right now. There's no real strong indication. I gotta see something. I gotta see something more. For now. Hopefully you're in the you're in the short trade and uh who well, I would think about take profits um you know yeah yeah right down in here <laughs> right down in here right down in this cluster so we got a nice cluster of, of of data um on this side of the you know look left and we've got some nice data over here well a hold Anyways, this is we've gone on a little a little bit too long here, but we had to we had to we had to zoom out to a higher time frames because our our, our two week um, open high low close scenario, uh, the thing we've been studying the most, hasn't really been you know helpful in this in this um, violent aggressive bearish activity. So I mean you you don't. You, you're not even getting a, a head and shoulders up in here. I mean, this has just been so violent. But that, I mean, that's the news for you, right? Anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for, um, you know, viewing and, uh, you know, liking my content. Um, it's uh, it's a real pleasure to be able to share it with you. This is Paramay Trades. This is my journal. Not an advisor. Um, please don't misconstrue this as um, financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. So we've got an open Discord if you want to stop in and um, you know view the resources, uh, come in, have a uh, have a chin wag with the with the group. Be more than welcome to have you. Thanks a lot and I hope you find yourself on the right side, the profitable side of the trade.